Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and it is part seven of the Mighty Condor by Trumpeter. And this this plane is so big that I, I can't even cover it with the box. See, we've got we've got wings sticking out there. We got a nose sticking out there, and part of the other wing tip. It's big, 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 big. So, when we left off last time, we had installed the front and rear of the gondola. And as you may recall, the gondola is removable, supposedly. 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 There we go. Now it's off. It's amazing how well that magnet holds it in place with these front and rear parts on. Now, a few people have suggested that I install some, uh, probably the best way to describe them would be maybe some furring strips at the back, just to take up some of the gap. I'll probably be doing that. The main goal of this particular episode is I want to get this ready for paint. You know, I basically want to be able to say, okay, the next thing I'm going to be doing is um, applying probably the undercoat, the, uh, whatever, whatever Germany calls their blue color. It escapes me at the moment. At any rate, it'd be nice to get it to the point where I can say, the next thing I do to this is going to be, be painting the underside blue. So that's our goal. So one of the first things I think we're going to need to do is to get working on our engines, get those put together and painted. And it looks to me like we're going to be able to put the, the fronts of the nacelles on for painting and then uh, pop them off and then install the engines and the props, which is always nice when you can do that. Because it means you can have spinny propellers instead of having them fixed. So, enough blathering. Get to work. You didn't really think I was going to Missed this opportunity to make a mold of these awesome engines, did you? Never know, I might need a BMW radial engine at some point in the future. Of course, that's how hoarding starts. Don't worry, these are not being harmed. Just making a mold of them. There's our completed mold for the engines, just in case you were curious. I haven't actually cast any parts from it, but you never know, I might need this sort of engine in the future, and now I've got a mold that I can recreate it with if necessary. And this really didn't slow me down this week because I actually made this mold two or three months ago. Now a word about the engine and the nacelles. Now this is a dry fit. All I've done is just assembled the parts without any glue. And you can see that the, uh, the propeller sits just outside the, the cowl, which is nice, which you should see. The... Engines are actually rather deep in there, but I'm sure they're probably that way on the prototype. The propeller itself is a little tight fit in there for turning. But wherein lies a bit of a problem, and let's take it apart, is Trumpeter would have you, the last thing you put on is the propellers themselves and they just jam them in the holes. Because if we turn it around, you can see the hole is blind. It's not been molded all the way through. But they also, the, the, the shaft which holds the propeller on is separate from the propeller itself. 
So you could install the pin and then the engine and the cowlings and then only then add the propeller at the very end of the model. Which is what you want to have happen if you want your propeller to be able to spin. But, ha, ah, here's the problem. The hole is blind and they don't give you a washer to hold it in. And note how proud this sits from the crankcase. So if we're going to drill this hole out so that we can put a washer on the end, we're going to have to make sure that our propeller continues to sit this far proud. Otherwise, the propellers are going to rub on the nacelles. So I've done some modifications. This is the the original part. As you can see, it's blind. And this one I've drilled through so that the shaft can protrude and I can put a bushing on it. And thus the propeller will be able to spin. Now this required that I change this part. And one of the problems is, is this part is intended to go in that blind hole and have the propeller stand off from the engine and the, the nacelle the correct amount. So this one is the original, there's the modified part. And what I had to do is I had to put a new shaft on, obviously, because this shaft is, isn't long enough. So this one still needs to be cut to the right length. The reason that there is a thicker piece on there is that serves as a bushing to make sure that the propeller is still going to be the correct length or is going to stand off from the engine and then to sell the correct amount. Because without... Uh, Without a blind hole to go in, of course, it can get pushed all the way in and the propeller could be rubbing up against the, uh, the front of the nacelle. And of course, we don't want that. So this is a beefier shaft. So after drilling out the engine, uh, I also had to make the hole wider as well. But really, this one was such a tight fit. As a matter of fact, I almost couldn't get it out. So there was no way it was ever going to spin. And here's all of our prop shafts, all four of them, after their appointment with the plastic surgeon. To be longer and thicker. And here is the front of our engines with our prop shafts installed. And you can see that there has been a, a keeper of a bushing installed on the back and they all turn fairly freely although I think this is the only one which is free enough to blow on <sighs> there we go multi-engine planes I'm usually lucky to get one propeller to spin on its own but fortunately the way that uh, trumpeter is engineered this kit is the propellers themselves just basically nicely fit on the end of the propeller shaft like that. So I'm free to put the backs of the engines on and to trap the engines inside the nacelles. As you can see I've already put some gun metal on the cylinders. I'm going to further do some dry brushing with some silver and I'm going to see if I can pick out the wiring and of course the the gear case there that has to be painted as well, but at least the engines are moving along now that I've taken care of this little engineering item on my to-do list. The fronts of the engines have been painted. I basically used gunmetal for the cylinders. The, I'm assuming those are the push rods. Those are bright silver. The gear case there at the front is a light gray. And I just basically dry brush those wires on and I started painting the backsides thinking 
that maybe you could see them through the wheel wells, but that's a complete waste of time. You're not going to see anything with the backsides of the engines. Now, before I put together my engine cowls and nacelles, and I apologize for calling this front piece here the nacelle. It's obviously the cowl, and the nacelle is the entire assembly. I want to make sure that I'm using all the right parts. What's interesting is, is it says outer engine assembly. It uses all common parts. See, D6, D7. So it doesn't matter whether it's on the inside the cells or the outers. They use the same parts, D6 and D7. However, the difference lies in these caps that they fit on. One is D51 and one is D50. But those parts seem to be identical in form. Tricky. One thing is at least clear is I can at least get the cowlings together because they all use identical parts. Now, as is visible here, I've painted the inside of the cowl a dark gray. Basically, this is a RLM 70, which is a dark gray. Kind of a universal German color. Obviously, they got a good deal at the factory for that. So, as you can see, I've left one area here unpainted, and that's so that that's actually where the engine rests in there. There should be a whole big pile of framework or something here, but that does not exist in the model, and I don't think anyone's going to notice that it's not there, so I'm not going to worry about it. So there is part 50. 51 and I've already put some gray on them not that we're ever going to be able to see them just as the barest of glimpses in behind the engine and as you can see they're pretty much identical they've got these notches in the same places we flip them over you can see they're pretty much identical on the back side as well oh wait a minute they do, well, I mean, they're, they're handed in that, you know, one side has a small block, one side has the, the larger knot, or the larger block. Don't know what the difference is. So this part was a 51, which means it's for one of the outer nacelles. I don't know what difference it makes, but basically the, the 50s are marking as I for inner, and... The 51s are marking for O for outer. Now, regardless of which one you use, there's only one way for the cowls to fit on this intermediate piece, which is like this. So pretty much these two bulges line up with here. And since all the, the inner nacelles are identical, they all have the same sort of notches, this is the... This is the only way the engine can go, with this towards the bottom, and this towards the, the right wing, or the starboard wing. So I'm assuming this means that all four uh, outer, or I should say, all four engine cowls and engine mounts are probably identical on this plane, which certainly would be something advantageous for a warplane. means you're only shipping one type of engine spare to the front line and it'll fit anywhere on the plane. So what we're looking at here is a finished engine cowling front of nacelle. I'm assuming this is probably some sort of an oil cooler. That's made up of three separate parts. And there are seven separate exhaust stubs to be put onto each nacelle. And there are three different types of exhaust stubs. So you want to make sure that you're looking at the instructions when you start assembling this, that you don't get them mixed up. Although I gotta say, by the time I got to the fourth one, I was looking at the instructions. I knew where the heck they went. Um, I did drop one on the floor and spent maybe about two or three minutes looking for it. And I'm like, well, that's not happening. So at some point I'm going to have to take a hunk of plastic and, make a replacement one but this is what they look like i have to say by the 
when you were working on the first one, you're thinking, hey, this is fascinating. By the time you got to the last one, it was kind of, well, this is work now. So I think these can probably be glued onto our plane, finally. You know, if this didn't already look impressive before, putting the engines on certainly has increased the old impressivo factor. Somehow or other, I don't think that's a word. Well, this week wasn't nearly as productive as I thought it was going to be. It is early afternoon on Sunday, and I'd like to post this video on Sunday. I still have to put maybe another 20 minutes of editing into it, and then, of course, my computer will take two hours to save it. Actually, posting it doesn't take that long, so I guess my internet connection must be decent. So, thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on modeling.